What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ordinary E and episode 2 of season 4 of the free PC upgrade. You saw in the last episode I put in the new motherboard and how I chose it. Hopefully I got it right, let me know in the comments if you think I chose the right board. And in this episode I'm going to tackle the RAM because the whole point of changing the motherboard was to get more RAM so I can edit using better editing and hopefully maybe game. We did improve the FPS in the test and we did improve the score overall. That board came with a CPU which I've left in there and I use that cooler. I understand that those tower coolers are better. Don't know if that's a good one. It's a cooler master one. Uh, we're just going to leave that for now because at the moment we've tackled the motherboard. I'm pretty happy that's the best motherboard we've got or I've got sorry and uh, what I want to do now is understand the RAM. So this is DDR4. I'm not used to DDR4. I'm used to DDR3 and I understand the difference between 3 and 4 is that 4 is more power efficient so it uses less wattage and it's quicker. Now this motherboard can have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and we saw in the last video that sticks when when i read them they said 16 gigabytes but in brackets it says two times eight so i'm wondering does that mean that it's part of a pair so that's why in total they're 16 let me know in the comments if that's right so what i want to do is take it out actually and show you yeah it says ddr4 here and on the back can't get it to focus guys can't get it to focus guys so what does i do i'll take a picture and put it on the screen now and you can see on the back it says ddr4 gen 6 i5 7 16 gigabytes and then in brackets 2 times 8 gigabytes now i think that is because it's part of a kit and it does say at the bottom there 1.22 volts which is better than the 1.5 volts that the ddr3 uses so it's more efficient so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through the ram that i've salvaged and we're going to see whether this is actually 8 gigabyte sticks each and see if I've got any more. Now the other thing I've learned about RAM is timings. So they have to have the same timings. I don't know what that is or how to find that out. I believe I can use CPU Z or something like that and try and check out the timings. Or I might have more of the same RAM and I think I do. So I might have more of this Vengeance RAM or I might have four of another RAM. So we'll see if we can get the timings and I believe the timings is the speed or it might be saying else. DDR3, direct access memory. That's what RAM is or something like that. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is try and populate all those four slots and see if that does anything to the PC does it make it quicker does it give me a better score does it give me better FPS who knows I don't know I'm learning that's why I'm an ordinary guy learning about this stuff I'm gonna do some research on Google and understand what those two times in the brackets means and then we're gonna go through my box that I've salvaged a load of RAM and see what else we've got if we've got any more DDR4s and whether the timing is correct whatever that is so I need to Google what timings are I'm learning all this obviously from J2 Sen Liner, Big Wit, Greg, Zalazar, all those kind of people. They talk about these things, but tough to fully understand, so I'm going to have to read up on this stuff. I understand Jay started his own upgrade PC thing. He's already spent £600, and mine's cost zero at the moment, although he's getting 100 FPS. So I don't know how he's done that. Um, I think it might be because of the graphics card. But yeah, let's, let's, uh, let me read up on this and figure it out. Okay, guys, so we I've just put the RAM back in and powered up my system, and I'm looking at the user manual to understand what kind of RAM I need and have and what you can do this is where the user manual online shows me or tells me what to do and it's not really telling me very much which is great it says go to the gigawatts website for the latest supported memory speeds and memory modules can support so dual channel memory configuration and then you go to the next page and it gives you this so channel a and b can have ddr4 and that's slots one and two and then four and three can have ddr4 and then the four memory socket divides two channels each channel has two memory sockets for the following so you can do ddr3 as well and then down here it says two more modules DSSS, DSSS, SS is single sided, double sided. Yeah, it doesn't really tell me very much about speeds or anything like that. So I don't know where else in this manual I can find that. However, I have learned a bit more about the RAM. Having read this article here by robots.net, it tells us that RAM, which is random access memory, is so that your CPU can access temporarily stored data quickly. And it does this by using CAS latency, RAS to CSS delay, RAS pre-charge delay, and some secondary timings. So these are called timings, primary timings, like TRFC, TRRD, and TFAR. Each timing plays a crucial role determining the overall speed and efficiency of the RAM. Wow, okay, so we're learning more stuff about RAM now because initially we only knew that size and capacity. Now we're learning that how it works. So what I've done is I've now put this into the spreadsheet. So I've put RAM equals random access memory, DIM, and I'll tell you what this number here is in a moment because I did some research. DIM equals dual inline memory 
three module and I'll tell you where that dim comes from as well so that's what the eight plays a significant role I then did some so this was my system originally I have started to put in my dream PC and I'll show you that at the, at the end but yeah and this is what we what I've currently know is in the system right eight uh, DDR4 and the size is eight gigabytes I suppose I should put that in here so GB so eight gigabytes and how I get that if I press control shift escape it takes me to performance open that and on the memory tab here it, can sh it shows me the speed which is 2133 megahertz two slots used it's a dim form factor and the hardware is 47.5 megabytes don't know what that means but over here 16 so now we've got so we've got two slots total is 16 which means half of that for each one is eight so that's what we've got for sure eight gigabytes each slot total in 16 I put the speed here of 2400 megabytes megahertz because that's what it says on the RAM stick however as I show you here the system's only using 2133 now I'm gathering that is because earlier when in the last video when I did the motherboard we found out that the board can support up to 64 gigabytes but it can only do 2133 megahertz of memory modules so it can't do the 24 which is why it's probably stepping it down and using what it can at its maximum so we know that we need to be able to fill the four slots we need can we can find modules that are 2133 not the 24 Four. so that's good going back to the mit to here i'll probably change this then to two one three three no we keep it at two four right but we know right two one so we'll change it to two one three three but we know that these modules are two four hundred now i don't know how to find these values which are for the ram timings of these sticks so down here it tells you what these timings do these trfs and tfw it affects the refresh and synchronization data between the memory banks what does that mean i don't know but it's represented in numbers like this this 16 18 18 36 or 15 15 15 35 right so i then learned that maybe possibly cpu z can tell us these timings so we'll go to cpu z now so we'll open cpu z continue and we'll click on memory and it does tell us so it's 15 15 15 36 278 and 2t what the hell does that mean no idea so if anyone can tell me in the comments below that'd be great but we can put that in now so 15 15 15 36 15 15 15 36 and what was so trcd trp ras is 36 trfc is 278 and cr is 2t all right so it doesn't give me a rrd and a faw so i don't know where to get these from i don't know what these things mean is that good bad let me know in the comments so that's what we're looking for guys we're looking for memory modules to match this so that we can fill up all four slots and hopefully get the total gigabytes of memory increased that's my goal for today's video yeah so let's head over to to the memory now that we know this information i don't know how useful it is to me but let's head over to the, the table and see all of the memory that i've collected and see if we've got anything that we can do to increase this memory also we can put a cost in so we'll figure that out the other thing to rem the other thing it does say i'll just put it in here is voltage so we saw on the memory sticks that the voltages are 1.2 so we need to know that all right so we need to match 1.2 and yeah let's um so at the moment we have more than one so we'll just do 1.2 1.2 so if we get more memory sticks then we'll know we'll start counting what the system uses in voltage so at the moment we're using 2.4 volts right yeah so armed with this information let's go and see what we can do so also what i read from this article is that you can check the speed you can check your ram in your system by using using this command prompt here in CMD yeah so if we go over to here and we go CMD and we run as administrator click yes move that over a bit need to copy this command so copy that control C go over to here press control V and then hit that so that gives me configured clock speed 2133 1.2 volts manufacturer is this memory type is zero so that's where this came in here uh, dim memory type oh I don't know so I don't know what memory type zero means and then part number blah 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 now you can also put in the same command and put form factor and that will give you the form factor of 8. And that's where I got the 8 from to equal dim. So 8 equals dim. Where did I get that from? I read another article that gave me the list of the form factors. So if you look at this list, 0 unknown, 1, 2, da, 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 8 is dim. What does that mean? No idea. But you had so dim, R3, I've, I've seen so dim before, but 8 is dim. And dim stands for dual inline memory module. So there you go. How that helps me, I have no idea. But now that we know that information, let's go and check out the memory sticks that I've collated over the course of a year and see if we've got any 
any DDR4s that are 2133 megahertz, that volt at 1.2, because what you want to do is match the dims, otherwise you could damage your system if you're not having the right speed and the right voltage, and possibly even the right timings may cause your system to crash. And I've always had a bugbear about RAM modules. They do not detail what the RAM module is on the module, clearly. But anyway, let's go over and we'll check this out. We'll check out what we've got. All right, guys, so this is my little box. I've been collecting all the RAM in. And if you remember, my little diagram measured out the notches in the RAM so I could figure out if it's DDR3, 2 or 1. I don't have DDR4 on here. Didn't think I'd get to that stage using parts given to me for free. So we'll just go through here and what I can rule out straight away are obviously the laptop RAMs, which are these little ones. So I don't need those. I guess I should have bagged these up originally, but straight off the bat, I've got DDR4 here. DDR4, DDR4. Now, we can check quickly what the timings and stuff is. Well, we can't check the timings because it never shows us on the RAM sticks, but we can check 1.2 volts. That's good. Actually, it does have timings. 15, 15, 15, and then 28. Oh, so we had 36, right? Wow. Okay, so I think the timings on this say 13, 15, 15, 28, and it's 2133 megahertz. So the timings are not the same. Well, that's a shame because these are the same sticks. All right, let's carry on. PC2. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. It's so it's so unclear. I mean, so the information I put up on the screen, that's the information we need to know, right? But uh, PC2, so this is DDR2. And if I measure that up, it should line up with that notch, and it does. So I take it these are all PC2s in this, yeah. Whoever packed this did very well. PC2. PC2. So I'm not interested in the size or anything like that at the moment. I'm just trying to establish PC2s, PC DD DDR4s, DDR2s. That's laptop over there. Right, what have we got here? Corsair Vengeance. Again, a Vengeance. This is 8 gigabytes. 214, 2133. And the timings are 9, 11, 11, 31. 1 1.6 volts. So does it tell me what DDR it is? And these ones don't tell you what DDR is. So that's great. Why, why don't they clearly mark out what they are? We have two of those. So we have matching pair of those. All right, what do we have here? Another Corsair Dominator. That's a good That's a good make. That's the ones I'm trying to find. Doesn't tell me what DDR it is, but it gives, gives me timings of 55515. 1066 megahertz, 2 gigabytes. Yeah, I don't know what DDR it is. We could line up the notch. So the notch is DDR2. So that's DDR2. All right, we have some HyperX Furies. 1.5 volts. Doesn't give me the timings. Doesn't give me the DDR. So we'll line it up. There's a DDR3. Three's over here. So. That's the, that's the issues I'm having guys. So all I'll do is I'll go through these and then we'll figure out if I've got any more DDR4s and that's about it. So I'll do that and I'll cut to the end. All right, so that is done guys. So there's our DDR1s, which we can take off the table because the motherboard is now DDR3 or DDR4. To save me having to do that again, I'm gonna keep it labeled up. We can take DDR2 off the table as well. So that leaves us DDR4 and DDR3. Now, the next thing to consider, obviously what we just learned are the timings, the voltages and the speed. So fortunately, this DDR4, though it looks exactly the same, the timings are off. It's 13, 15, 15, 28, and we have 15, 15, 15, 36. Speed is 2133 megahertz, which the motherboard can take, so that's good, and the voltage is the same. But I don't know what will happen if I put these in with the wrong timing. Let me know in the comments what I should do. Don't think I'm gonna put them in at the moment until I receive your comments or get some good advice or do some more research myself, obviously. Um, what we can do is probably look at DDR3. Maybe I'll go to DDR3 rather than four to try and populate all four slots and see if I've got the same timings and voltages and whatnot or four sticks here because I have a lot of sticks of DDR3. But then all I want to do to try and sort that out, so why I'm waiting for you guys to let me know or me to do more research on whether I can use those with the sticks I have in there, what I'll do is I'll just separate these into the capacity, so whether they're four gigs or eight gigs, so I'm looking for eight gigs, so I want four eight gigs to get to 32. So let me do that quick. Okay, so that's done guys, I've got a bunch of four gigabyte sticks, so I've got four four gigabyte sticks 
plates, but they're all different. Samsung, I've got three the same, one different, and this has one, this one shows a timing of 11, 12, A1, and then these ones don't, so no idea what the timings are on those, but they're four gigabytes. These are two gigabytes, so a bunch of two gigabyte sticks. Don't know what these are because they don't even tell me anything. They don't even tell me the capacity. So in order to figure out what that is, I'm gonna to have to put them in a the system, a DDR3 motherboard, but I don't have one running at the moment because I've swapped it out. And then we're left with these. So these are eight gigabyte sticks, but all the timings are different. 911, 911, 11, 31, and 99924, 99924. Speeds are 16, 16, and these are two 133s. So the speeds match what I want, but the timings don't. So I don't know what to do, guys. I'm gonna do some more research to see if I can put different timings. So what it would be, it would be these ones here, because these are DDR4s, so it'd be more efficient on the voltage, because the voltage on these are 165, 165. So DDR3 is 165 volts, and the voltage on these are 12. So that gives me confidence that I wouldn't fry the motherboard or fry the other memory sticks, I don't know, because the voltage would be the same. The only problem I have is the timing numbers, 13, 15, 15, 28, and I need 15, 15, 15, 36. Let me do some research. Maybe I'll just take a chance or do I wait for your comments? Ah, decision. All right, guys, I've done some research and as long as the voltage is the same, then we shouldn't damage the motherboard or the RAM sticks. The speeds, so the performance is the only thing that's going to suffer if the timings are different. The speeds are the same, going to be, the, well, the speed has already been downstepped by the motherboard on the ones in there because they're 2400 megahertz. These are 2133. The motherboard can only do 2133. So that the, the memory chips in there at the moment are already downstepped by the motherboard. Board. So the 2133 won't be affected with regards to performance because these are 2133 as well. So the only difference is the timings. And everyone online are saying if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And what the mem what the motherboard will do is it will use the lower latency. So what these timings do is to transfer speed and reading and data. You know, it's basically the latency is what they're calling it. So the latency might get worse and it will, it will downstep it to the, the lowest latency, but I'll have more gigabytes of memory. So I don't know what the benefit the pros and cons of that will play out when using the system I think the only thing we can do is put them in and give it a go yeah I think the only thing we should do is put them in and see what happens let's do it all right so one other thing I want to just test and record before I put in the new RAM is the boot time of my PC so I'm going to reset this so we got that as a benchmark as well reset start the clock and stop the clock so about 35 seconds to get into the screen there and also they're telling me that i can go into my bios and you can check your memory stuff there so let's do that as well okay you have to press delete to get into the bios and it's telling me here memory frequency 2.133 so yeah now what else can you do here memory settings configure memory settings including xmp profiles memory clock and memory timings how do you do that then ah so 21.33 auto memory boot mode auto memory frequency 2 one one two one three three memory enhancement settings normal or oh, you can put enhance enhance performance i'm going to leave everything normal for the beginning and maybe we play around with this in another day or once i learn a bit more about this here's your so here is the timings 15 15 36 ah look at this so you can get all the information about the timings all the different things that i told you about earlier so that's where you find that from but we'll see if these change 15 15 15 36 back this memory module is the same so channel a and b so i guess i'm going to get c and d when i put this memory in before we blow up this uh if anyone knows what best settings to use let me know in the comments and we'll try it out right, let's save and exit all right let's put this memory in all right guys so those are the slots and i'm going to be putting it into slots four and one i guess no i'm gonna be putting it into slots three and four i guess but before i do that i'm gonna turn the power off power supply because that's what they tell you to do power's off now let's put this ram in might have to put the camera down right all the ram seems to fit nice and snug had a bit of trouble trying to get this one in by the fan but it was fine off in the end all the tabs clicked into place so that's it guys let's see if this works let's power it on hopefully nothing hopefully nothing blows up are you ready okay so far so good love that light strip on the motherboard you see it there my rgb there's my other rgb bit it's just a fan 
So will she power on? So it just turned off, but I think it's just training the memory is what they call it. And it's powered back on by itself. Let's see what it does. So far, nothing. So it doesn't like it. It's not turning on. So what it's doing is just power cycling, just turning off and turning on. So it looks like you cannot put different timing RAM in here. Not happy with it. I'll just show you when it does it. There you go. So that's about the fourth or fifth time now. So yeah, it doesn't like it possibly because the RAM's not the same. So I wonder what would happen if I just put maybe the RAM sticks are not good or the slots are not good. I might just try with just the two RAMs, the different RAM on their own just to see if they do work. All right guys, so I just tried it with the two RAM sticks. The lesser ones are 2133s and it's doing it still. So I've, so this RAM must be 40. I'm going to try one at a time now and see which one it is or it might be both. Or maybe this RAM is just not compatible, but it should be. Okay, so we have just the one stick in there, it is booting up, so possibly this RAM is 40. I'll just try this one on its own as well, see what happens, but yeah, it boots up. Yeah, so it's doing it with this RAM, so this RAM must be 40, I was thinking it might be the slot, but it looks like it's the RAM, so the RAM is just power cycling. I don't know, maybe I'll clean it with some IPA, see if that does anything, but other than that, we're going to lose that RAM stick. Alright, it worked, I cleaned it with some IPA and um, turned on, so the RAM stick is good. I would have thought, I looked at the contacts, they looked fine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all the contacts now, because I looked at the contacts, they, they didn't seem dirty or anything but I put IPA wiped it with a bit of q-tip and you can see there was no dirt on there really or maybe a little bit of dirt but yeah it's powered on now so let's pull all the sticks back in and see what we can do moving forward right I've got all four sticks in again looking nice and snug turn the power on and hopefully this time it works who would have thought just cleaning it with isopropanol alcohol would do the trick powering off again all right it's still on it did power off and back on again yes booting all right we've got four ram sticks in there and it is booting now okay so we are in we are running we are the system seems okay just show you the four sticks are still in there and we are in windows let's do the boot test first and then we'll check out everything else so let's see if anything's been affected so about 35 seconds to beat let's see what happens we start start the clock and stop the clock so roughly about the same 37 35 seconds so that's fine next we'll go into the bios and see what it shows us there okay so this is the bios and we still got a memory frequency of 2133 nothing else seems to have changed let's go to memory again auto detection still only has channel a and b okay yeah so channel a is 15 15 15 36 and no change there everything else seems on memory to be the same there right go back channel b 15 15 15 56 so no change there i believe and everything else seems to be the same all right let's exit this and go and do some testing well go and check we'll check cpu z we'll check the command prompt and we'll check task manager and then we'll also run some benchmarks again like heaven and cinebench and i can screenshot that so i can show you it doesn't tell me how much memory is here. There's power management, platform power management chipset peripherals i've never been in this before guys so i need to uh familiarize myself with this stuff but not for this video i guess but yeah it doesn't tell me anything about the memory how many sticks xmp now i've seen j2 cents talk about this and he says to turn that on for better gaming experience but chip configure memory setting include xmp profiles don't know at a minute we're not gonna health check Ooh, that's cool 3 volts 5 volts 12 volts what else we've got cpus running at 36c CPU temperature warning disabled should probably put that on right anyway not for this video we'll have to play about with that when i finish upgrading the pc right let's go do some benchmarks and check out and check okay guys so let's open up what one should we do first let's do Control shift and escape get task manager and here we have performance memory 32 gigabytes yes so it's recognizing 32 gigabytes it's running at 2133 megahertz which is is the same as it was and it's using four slots on the dim factor so everything seems to be the same here it's, it's stable so that's really good check out the graphics card at 84 percent because i'm using the screen capture but anyway yeah that all seems the same so i'm good there we can update our actually should we update our spreadsheet as well so we're now putting in eight and eight we have 32 we're running at that and then we now have additional two of these so we added a bit more voltage not too much and we're running at 15 15 36 so i don't know why are we running at 1550 oh yeah that's where i got it from so i checked G, uh, gp uh, cpu z and we'll get to memory yeah and there you go 15 15 15 36 and 278 so no differences there uncall frequency this is jumping all over the place i don't know if that matters let me know in the comments but yeah all of that's not changed we now have 32 gigabytes guys so hopefully i can edit even more so you, you saw in the last video it was about 40 minutes long that showed you that i was able to edit a longer video and now
now I should be able to edit it even and it was stable anyway but I should have no problems now editing with 32 gigabytes what's left to do then let's run some benchmarks I guess we're going to run heaven and Cinebench and see if any of that has been affected all right so there's our heaven benchmark finished and we got fps of 8.4 score of 211 minimum fpf was 5.4 and the max of 6.2 let's see how that compared I understand that a subscriber reached out to me and said that it's probably this is just testing the GPU and that the onboard graphics for the 6700k is probably better than the GPU that I got in there but when I finish with the upgrades I will test that theory not in this video so how does that compare 8 and 2 12 so no not really any difference there all right let's do the Cinebench test now okay so the single core Cinebench test has just finished and we get a total of 1122 puts us just above what we was before so we was at 117 so that's good so we are now 1122 I don't think RAM should make a difference but hey ho there you go okay let's test the multi-core all right and the multi-core test is finished in Cinebench and we get a score of 5502 which is 120 odd better than I had before so we're now 5502 put that in 5502 I didn't think RAM would improve the system it's not by much I know so there we have it guys the system now has 32 gigabytes of RAM DDR4 although it doesn't make much of a difference in the Cinebench and Heaven scores the system should do better editing software and it does feel snappier using the web and the programs so that's good if you find this video helpful smash the like button for me subscribe to the channel it means a lot and help others subscribers to activate the giveaways obviously let me know your thoughts in the questions I had uh, in the video and your answers to that or any other thoughts you want to raise so that we can learn more but if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead